Recording in progress. Hey everybody, MegRollers31 back here for FSI DFS. It is Thursday, we have 11 game slate. Sorry for the late start today, I had some doctor's things going on this morning. Also, we're really trying to um, get these videos out on a podcast, so if you don't have time to come to uh, YouTube and, and watch them, then you can listen to them on the go. So, uh, yesterday I thought I put the audio file out there, I put the podcast together, I launched it, I listened to it, I was so excited, and then the team told me that I was the only one that could access it and listen to it, which I learned a lot of good things on it because here I tweak the audio a little bit, so if it's not working for the video, please leave it in the comments below that um, it sounds weird or sounds robotic or something, and um, I'll work on, on tweaking it um, a little bit for you because I want to make sure that it it's, uh, works for both sides. So it still works for YouTube when you guys watch the videos, but it also works for podcasts um, coming up when we were able to get those out and launch them. And like I said, so if you don't have a chance to sit and watch the video, you can listen to it while you're mowing the lawn or doing dishes or out for a walk or in the car or wherever. So um, anyways, appreciate everybody watching here. So the one thing moving into podcasts is I will have to over explain because the one thing I realized in listening to the video back is that um, the listener can't see the screen. So I have to make sure that if I'm referencing things there, um, that we are pretty clear as to what uh, should be uh, the content of the information. So it's there. So. Bear with me. Appreciate you watching as always. So let's jump into this slate. Um, looks like a nice one. We've got some pitching options, got some hitting options. Uh, big slate for a Thursday. I think it's mostly because we're heading up on the All Star break. So let's jump right into it. First of all, we have the New York Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, we have Cortez and Luis Castillo going up against each other. Um, Cortez has been was decent to start the season, and then he just kind of trailed off a little bit. So I think he's still good in this matchup here, but I don't like necessarily think he's is dominant. So out of the top price pitchers, I think he'd be down like probably fifth on the list. And Castillo has is obviously not who he used to be, and he's up against a a decent lineup here with the Yankees. They've been a little bit cold recently seems like baltimore is the hottest team in the um al east right now with uh, toronto and tampa bay with injuries and and boston and the yankees bats cooling off a little bit and maybe it's just been a long grind they're looking forward to the all-star break although the yankees have i think the most people on the all-star team so um that's not really going to be a break for some of them anyways castillo i, I think He's risky. I wouldn't completely roll him out. I don't really like the price tag of eight nine, but um, you know, if if you think that in a GPP that he can put up some points for you, and that the Yankees are going to still be cold until the end of the game, which seems like what they've been doing recently, they're uh, turning it on against bullpens. Um, you know, then he might be a little bit interesting there. Bat wise, the Yankees. I think they'd be the fifth top stack today. Again, I want to see him wake up a little bit. Uh, Castillo's tough on righties and uh, once I get to the bullpen it's a whole different story so I still think like Rizzo's in play and, and Carpenter but I'm not in Gallo maybe but I'm not super um interested in them today and the Reds on the other side I think you know with Cortez's struggle some of the righties could be especially Jury who's is pretty expensive but I think it makes a decent um stack potentially in the cheaper range because the rest of the, them are, are pretty cheap I would avoid Votto here with the lefty on lefty Next up, we have the Atlanta Braves and the Washington Nationals. Um, Kyle Wright, he's had an on and off season here. I think Washington's a decent matchup for him to here, so uh, definitely has a lot of win equity. So I think he's okay on FanDuel and DK. I think he's probably like in the top 10 for pitchers tonight, but not somebody that I'm making a high priority. I like the price tag at 8.5, maybe like an SP2 candidate because there's two top guys that I think people are really going to try to choose from. And it looks like Washington pulled uh, Anavol Sanchez out of the archives. The, the National, the Smithsonian, yes, because this game is in Washington. He's like 38 years old. He was great back when he was a Marlin, and I think he's been in a couple other teams here. But guys just got rocked recently. Uh, don't know how deep he goes in the game, but I think the Braves set up as the top stack on the slate here. We've been saying that multiple times, but he's, he's more of a reverse splits guy, too. Righties have just annihilated him. I'm not saying don't play the lefties, but I'm making the righties a priority, and it's just hard to get a good pitcher and pay up for them. So might need to get creative over stacking the Braves. Washington, not super interested. If you're playing 150 max, you can throw them in there against right, but other than that, not super interested. 
Next up, we have the Kansas City Royals and the Toronto Blue Jays. Again, same thing happened with Philly, but it's even more impactful with Kansas City. Um, there are so many guys that did not make the trip because they're not vaccinated. So Kansas City for this four-game series is going to be bare-boned. Um, so you want pitchers against them. You want uh, hitters against the pitchers. Uh, definitely, this is a great four days for Toronto until we hit the All-Star break, playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're going to want some Blue Jays in your lineup, some whether cash or GPP. Um, you'll see what applies, but there's going to be some tremendous opportunities here against Kansas City, which was an average team, and now they're well below average with all the people that they're going to be missing. But then again, they're going to turn into a very value team. So who knows? It's baseball. Anything could happen. Maybe this is a chance for some of these guys that get called up or don't normally play to audition and make a name for themselves. So maybe the 2K guy hits three home runs in one game. And again, it's baseball. Anything can happen. So uh, Guzman, his ankle's good. He's up against a weak lineup. I think he's a great play here. And the pricing's not bad. It's 8-6. So... I still think, you know, the top plays are going to be Rodon and Burns to try to pick between them. Valdez is in a great situation also, and McKenzie against Detroit. But I think Gossman is definitely up there in the top five if you're going to pay up for pitcher. But, I mean, he's in the mid-range of 8-6, so it's not a bad price. And that might help you, like, get your Braves stack in there too. So uh, definitely consider him. Carlos Hernandez on the other side is obviously a fade. Blue Jays, I like them. I think they'd be my fourth favorite uh, stack here. And then Kansas City, if you need some cheap pieces in your lineup, I think that's where they um, help you out tonight. Detroit and Cleveland, uh, wind blowing in here. Uh, not too much. 75 degrees, looks like a nice day for baseball. Elvin Rodriguez is a fade. Tristan McKenzie, he was very vital in the beginning of the season. He's always had like a strikeout upside, but just recently he's just not been... Um, as bad as he was earlier. So I really like him here. I think right-handers against Detroit, besides Riley Green, there's really nobody else to help him in this lineup. So definitely very interested at 8-3. And I think, you know, if you want to try to get the Braves in and, like, don't want to have to play, like, Kansas City with them, I think Gossman and McKenzie might make a good pairing for your SP1 and SP2, um, which have a lot of high upside and great matchups tonight. Uh, Cleveland Bats, I think they're um, sneaky good, too, here against uh, Rodriguez. He's really struggled. Uh, yeah, just any of them, I think, it would be would be good. Yeah. Um, and you got, like, Nolan Jones here. He's got a lot of power, uh, definitely hitting the ball hard. Uh, it, it will it will eventually come. Same thing we said about Rushman from uh, Baltimore. He struggled a little bit when he came up, but, um, you know, eventually came around to it. Now he's up in, like, a 4 or 5K guy. I think Jones is going to get there, too. Like, he's he's got some talent, and he's only 2K. He's got the splits advantage against a bad pitcher, so – it's almost a free square for you right there, especially in a night where if you're trying to pay up for um, 10, 11 K for a pitcher and get the very expensive 5 K um, a piece uh, Atlanta brave guys. in. so next game up is Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays. We have uh, Cutter Crawford and Drew Rasmussen. Both these guys are risky. I'm not super interested in it. Crawford, I don't know how deep he goes into the game. Yes, the Rays are banged up. He does have some K upside there at 6'8", so he, and he's not a fade, but I think he's risky, and Rasmussen doesn't really go deep, 80, 85 pitches, so I'm not interested there. Boston, I think, makes a good GPP stack. The Rays, if the lefties, especially against Crawford, that's where he's really struggled. So uh, Choi and there's a Aranda at second base. If he's in there at 2K minimum, definitely would consider him. Uh, if Phillips is in there for a wraparound stack there, he's got a lot of speed. He's only 2K there. So the Rays are like KC. Um, I think I like the Ray lefties a little bit better at the 2K spot. But, you know, a mixture between them and Kansas City, you should be able to play whoever you want to um, tonight. Next up, we have the Dodgers and the Cardinals. Uh, very hot there, wind blowing a little bit, but it just looks like um, the weather is really going to help um, hitting in this ballpark. Uh, it's going to be hot and humid. Tyler Anderson and Dakota Hudson, both are decent pitchers, but you have decent offenses. So, again, like I'm not super interested. Anderson, I think I'd take a little bit of, over Cortez. Um, 
but he's facing a predominantly righty St. Louis offense, so that could, could definitely could lead to struggles. And Hudson, like, he doesn't really get blown up, but it is the Dodgers. They are a solid team here, so especially, like, the lefties, like Freeman and Bellinger and Muncy and Lamb, I think, and then mixing in the righties, I think they definitely uh, – I know the Dodgers have been cool a little bit also. Um, started to put it together a little bit last night, so – I think I like him as my third favorite stack there, and St. Louis is definitely my top GPP stack on the night. Um, again, the pitcher is not super interested, and Hudson's definitely a fade for me. Um, just no K upside there, and Anderson is, is risky. I like him, but just not in this game. Next up, we have the Chicago White Sox and Minnesota Twins. Wind blowing in here about 10 miles per hour, so that should help pitchers. Johnny Cueto and Sonny Gray, this is like would be an awesome battle if it was like 20, like, 13 or 14 about like eight years ago uh but Cueto he doesn't get blown up but he's not the same guy Minnesota is up and down hitting wise Sonny Gray on their side has been solid the White Sox have been coming on but they seem to have stalled a little bit recently so I think Sonny Gray will see some ownership at 8k against the White Sox he's really good against righties there's not too many lefties in this lineup that could hurt him so I think people might take him there Minnesota has a decent total too so they'll probably look at the win upside so I think uh, the White Sox make a leverage stack here and Minnesota makes a GPP stack but there's many of other teams I think they'd be like probably like my ninth or tenth favorite stack of the day uh so there's some things I, I think I'm just going to kind of cross this game off. I don't know which way it's going to go, and I'm not like super interested on 11 game slate. Uh, next up, we have Seattle Mariners and Texas Rangers. Marcus Gonzalez and Martin Perez, two lefties going at it. Gonzalez at 6'5 is okay. I, I think um, if I'm in the fade, he might be more in the risky category against Texas, but I mean, if you need it, I'm okay in 150 max there. Perez on the other side, he's just way too expensive on. Um, I think for 8-4, like, you, you'd want him more, like, in the 7K range. And I think it's FanDuel especially. He's way too expensive. So he's been solid at times, but there's a lot of power here, especially, like, Julio Rodriguez just crushes lefties. France is back in the lineup. Um, Santana hits more for – not super power hitter, but he can knock one out of the park every so often. Suarez is decent. Uh, Rally, the catcher here, the switch hitter is, is – decent i mean toro had not as much this year but it looks like they're going to throw almost an all right-handed lineup at him so i, I think seattle he could play in 150 max but i think i think let's move him over to um i think seattle and texas make the same like gpp here now to talk it out a little bit more uh, Texas on the other side, like Corey Seager has been super hot, but like Gonzalez is really good against lefties. He may be hit another home run against the bullpen, but I I'm going to be out on him just in this matchup today. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, don't, but he's up to 5.6K, so I I'm hopping off the Corey Seager bus for now. Um, you know, if, if he hits a home run tonight that, or two, then then fine. You know, I think I can make up the points in, in other places and not pay um 5.6 there I'd probably rather play like Swanson um for the Braves probably for around the same price point in a much better matchup so that's where I'm going there so again like Seattle makes a very interesting stack here with the all all the righties um very intrigued now with that I think I'll definitely have one of those Texas I don't think I'm going to be playing many of them against Gonzalez Okay, next up we have the Chicago Cubs and the New York Mets. Carlos Carrasco, Keegan Thompson. It's in Chicago. It's cooler there. It's 71 degrees, and the wind's blowing in about 10 miles per hour, which is, is good for um, pitching here. So Carrasco against the Cubs. There are some strikeouts. He has been better recently, so I'm okay with him as a cheap option at 7-6, but I love Keegan Thompson at 5 heat here. I think he's like 7-4 on FanDuel. He has been doing so well recently. He developed a slider. He has a third pitch. And as we were talking about with like Strider in a couple of these videos, that's why he's been a great young pitcher, but been struggling is he doesn't have that third pitch. He's been relying on just like 
two different pitches and trying to throw heat versus everybody. But now that Keegan Thompson has a slider, and it's not a slider that's like a, a pitch that nobody can hit and that's what he's relying on. It's just the fact that there's three options for him to throw now, which is getting batters off a little bit more and and struggling to adjust to what he's throwing, which has been making him more successful. And I know the Mets are hard um, lineup. They're very patient. They don't strike out much. But at 5'8", on a night that I want to probably get Rondon or Burns in my lineup and I want to get a bunch of Braves, he makes sense as SP2. On FanDuel, it is very hard to stack the Braves you want and get any pitcher, so he can make a lot happen and get you a decent secondary stack so you're not stacking the bottom of the Tampa Bay lineup or KC with them. It, it took me forever to build my FanDuel cash lineup today just because of pricing, which is weird usually because everybody's usually free on FanDuel, but not in this instance so bat wise the Mets and Chicago is 150 max if you really want to but I think it's going to be more of a pitching matchup and not looking at any bats there today Houston Astros and Los Angeles Angels uh, Valdez against Detmers Valdez has been decent um, there was a bunch of strikeouts um, I believe last night against these this Angel team so um, it should be the same we'll have to see if Trout's in the, the lineup I mean, you know, Tony's better against lefties and than righties, but other than that, so the, the rest of the lineup is not great here. And Valdez is is solid, so um, he's definitely probably behind Burns and Radon is the, probably one of the best pitchers on the slate here. Um, Detmers on the other side, like again, it's a lefty against a bunch of righties here. So Altuve, Pena, Bregman, Tucker hits lefty as well. Kind of scary. But he got sent down to triple A and he worked on some things and he's been better. So I think he could be sneaky tonight. Um, I have him as the top risky pitcher if you want to throw a dart at him. But again, Houston's usually a bad matchup. It's 78 degrees and wind blowing out a little bit in, in the Angels. And they have a 4.61 total for Houston. So it's more of a YOLO play. Just kind of like I like what I've seen since he came back up, but it was only one start, and I think it was against the Orioles, who um, have been hot recently. But I, I might just wait and see on Detmer. Probably not in this matchup, but Valtez I'm okay with. Houston makes a great GPP stack. The Angels I really have um, no interest in tonight. In fact, I even forgot to put them up on the board, so let me uh, put them in there. There we go. They'll be in the 150 max category. So final game, we have the Milwaukee Brewers and the San Francisco Giants, Corbin Burns and Carlos Rodon. Here's the pitching matchup I've been talking about. Burns is great. He leads all pitching metrics on this slate. The only thing I worry about is San Francisco can match him with a lot of lefties here. So I think he's a great option, an elite option. It's going to be a tough choice. I'm going to lean Rondon. Just I like what I've seen. He's gotten – he was injured. He looks like he's back in great form here. His velocity has been back up to 96. He's been striking people out, um, just having some solid, solid games against good competition. The Brewers don't scare me as much as San Francisco scares me against Burns. So I'm leading Rondon. I'm saving – $1,300 here also, and I absolutely love that on DK. It's not as much on FanDuel, but still is some savings. So I think that's where I'm really um, going to lean is Rondon. If you want to try to play both of them, then that's fine. I'll talk about how to try to do that in our lineup breakdown section. Uh, Bat-wise, I think they're just leverage plays. If you want to stack both sides, thinking either pitcher has an off night and the offense just crushes them and will have zero ownership which they should against these elite pitchers um that could take down a tournament play it in the like a dollar 20 max or something or the dollar 150 max i mean don't put too much money on it but you know it's baseball anything can happen and doing something like so contrarian like that sometimes can just definitely be the um the winning one so you know if i would play Rondon and stack the Giants like or play Burns and stack Milwaukee if you're doing that because then you take advantage of probably one of the highest upside pitchers but also your stack of bats is just going to be so contrarian that that might help you out so not recommending you do it but like if you like to take some dart shots every so often and you have the bankroll to do it then who knows it could definitely pay off for you so just to kind of recap for those of you who are on the podcast and can't see my screen here 
high price Rendon's my favorite pitcher Burns and Valdez Anderson from the Dodgers and Cortez from the Yankees are up there but more of GPP plays my favorite play in the middle range is McKenzie love that um, matchup against Detroit and the Gossman against Kansas City those two definitely stand out next would be Gray and then Wright is there for Braves and then Perez for Texas but he's just um, a little bit too pricey I think the two key guys that I like are um, Thompson from the Cubs and Carrasco they're both in the same game I think with the wind blowing in, it's really going to help pitchers there. I'm fading Hudson, Andrew Sanchez, um, Hernandez from Kansas City, Elvin Rodriguez from Detroit, Marco Gonzalez. I said it's on the fade list, but he probably could go in the risky category. Detmers is risky. Castillo is risky against the Yankees. Crawford is risky. Um, and Rasmutin just in that Tampa Bay and Boston game, they just don't go deep. And then Cueto um, against Minnesota just doesn't have the upside he used to so that's where we're at for pitching for stacks the top stack i have is atlanta followed by cleveland and the dodgers toronto against that casey watered down team and then the yankees fall to the bottom there just because um they're against a righty who does well against righties but the weather should be good they're in a decent ballpark and maybe they wake up tonight top gpp stack is st louis against the dodgers lefty there um, with hot weather also good for hitting houston and then boston minnesota and then i said texas and seattle would be the final ones and i think i'm leading at least playing one seattle right-handed stack there against um, prez the lefty cheap guys we're looking at kansas city cincinnati but not Vado, lefty and lefty take the righties there jury's expensive but the rest of the guys are reasonable and then tampa bay lefties so leverage plays against popular pitchers tonight would be the white Sox, detroit san francisco and milwaukee and then if you're just playing 150 maxes the rest of the teams left are the mets the um, nationals the cubs and the angels um you know if you're playing something for all the teams i play them but if not i just leave them out of your player pool tonight there's no reason to play them so i'm going to look at some lineup breakdowns and we'll start with uh, dk cash and again i think rodan and burns are the top two here if you want to try to get both of them and you can i'll get to that in a second but i think that i'm going to lean with rodan like i said beforehand and uh, take the savings on it and i'm going to put thompson as um you know, my cheap SP2 there that I think is in a, in a decent upside matchup. So then I'm going to take, um, I have to make a decision here because also makes sense, again, lefty righty matchup in the first base, but I might take Contreras as catcher. Only because righties have hit Sanchez so much better. He's, he's a terrible pitcher, so Olsen definitely makes sense and probably against their bullpen too. But, um, so either one there, you'll save a little bit. I, th I think with Contreras, they're, maybe they're around the same price point. He's usually um, priced up. When I'm saying Contreras, make sure that you're playing um, the Contreras from Atlanta and not the Cubs. They're almost the same price point. So he's 5500 Actually, you're paying 1000 more. So I'm going to stick with Olsen for this one. FanDuel, I think there's um, a difference there. So, uh, catching, there's a lot of, like, Maldonado, Huff for Texas might be batting, like, six. Uh, there's a lot of good cheap options there. I'm probably punting there today. So, um, then Riley, Swanson, Acuna is who we want at third base, shortstop, and outfield. Second base is just going to be a fill-in of who you feel, like, how much money you have left and whatever you feel for there. I'm going um, Jones in the outfield here from Cleveland, a 2K guy that I said has power and a great matchup. And then you just need to figure out who you're, if you're going to play five Braves, are you going to play Azunia? Probably make the most sense there. Uh, Harris, you could also potentially play there. Again, he's a lefty, but he's been hitting really, really well. Batting ninth has, um, has some speed too, I believe. So... So I think the thing is figuring out who your fifth brave is going to be and then how much salary you have left to fill in with the other ones. But playing that Jones play there outfield really um, helps you out. So Radon Burns is SP1, Thompson is SP2. Catcher I'm probably paying down for Olsen first base, second base, whoever fits, Riley at third, Swanson shortstop, Acuna outfield, Jones outfield, and then fill another brave guy there, whatever fits. So then this FanDuel one was the one that was super, super hard for me to 
to figure out to try to see. So you can play a stud pitcher, but then like you can't really play the Braves that you want to. Um, I dropped down to Contreras over Olsen to save there. And then Swanson and Okunia. And then I, I think I, what I have on the screen is that cho choose between Olsen and Contreras at first base. And then you can only play Riley or Swanson, not both of them. It, it's very hard. You could do that if you drop Acuna if he's not in. Um, I think Ozuna is somebody that you definitely want in there um, with the pricing on FanDuel for the Brave. So you want to try to get four Braves in there. And I think Contreras, Riley or Swanson, Acuna, and Ozuna make the most sense. I think I'm going to be lean Riley. Um, so... Just because Swanson's are so much more expensive. So if I'm going paying up for the stud to try to get that in with this Brave one, I'm going to be putting the Kansas City guys in. They're the ones that are going to make this lineup work. The 2K guys filling out the roster for that. If I go Gossman in the middle, I'm going to use Tampa Bay guys. You can do a bottom of the order Tampa Bay stack or... If you go down to Contreras over Olsen, you can get some of the um, higher price guys in for that. Meaning um, Choi and some of the guys in the middle of the lineup. So what I think I'm going to do for cashiers, I'm going to go Thompson. Then I can get a full Cleveland stack in there. I can get Contreras, I'd take a catcher. And then I can take J-Rom at third over Riley. I get Swanson, and then I get Acuna, Ozuna, and then I can fill in with, like, all the different options I have there between, like, Naylor, Reyes, or Quan, and then whoever's left for utility. So I think that's where I'm going. I'm taking Thompson. I'm taking Contreras. Swanson, Acuna, Ozuna, and then I'm going to fill in with um, Cleveland players for the rest of that for FanDuel Cash. So, GPP cash, as soon as I get the window to open. Oh, I turn into a hand there instead of an arrow. Okay, so, here I'm looking at Gossman and McKenzie. Uh, as my pitcher is Gossman, so when I'd lean, you could throw Thompson or Krasko in there if you want to save some and pay up on it. But I might play both of these ones. And then I really want to stack Toronto and Cleveland here for my GPP. So Kirk, take your pick of Vlad or Naylor, depending on how much salary you need to get other players in. Second base, just figure out who fits there. Um, J-Ram, Brichette. If you can get up the Springer, you'd have to pay down on SP2 or take Naylor. If not, then you can pretty much like Jones, like I said, is pretty much free. Reyes, Quan. If you go with Jones and pay down an SP2, you probably could get Springer and like Timo Hernandez if you want to make the Toronto stack. I think both of these teams are, are, are decent, so however you can mix and match them, I think you're fine with with that. And Gossman and McKenzie, I really like it pitchers. I think that's a very, very solid lineup. So again, Gossman or McKenzie, or play both there. Pay down for SP2, Kirk, Vellad or Naylor at first base, second base, whoever fits in, left over from the stack. Um, if you can't fit a Blue Jay or a Cleveland guy there, just take a one-off um, cheap guy, any, anything that fits that somebody that's playing, preferably higher up in the order for a team. Uh, Jose Ramirez for Cleveland at third base, Bichette from the Blue Jays at shortstop, Springer, if you can have enough money to get up to him, if not, Reyes, Quan. Jones are all um, outfielders for Cleveland that will fit to fill that out. Then finally, GPP for uh, FanDuel. McKenzie, I'm taking as the pitcher. Uh, Going to take Kirk or Bla Vlad here. Kirk saves you a lot for as a catcher from Toronto over Vlad. Um, and then I'm going to throw in the uh, Cincinnati team. So India there. If you can get up to Drury at third place, if not, then that's fine. Um, maybe play Donaldson there for the Blue Jays if you don't have a full stack yet. Brochette, Springer, Fam, and then decide if you want Timo Hernandez or another cheap outfielder from Cincinnati in there. And then your utility, you can go like uh, Farmer or Stevenson if you can get up to him. Again, stay with the righties here against Cortez, not the lefties. And um, I think, you know, I, I really liked them. I think they might surprise some people and put up some runs there. So that concludes the video. I appreciate everybody watching. So please put some comments below, especially if the sound sounds weird since I've tried to make some of the adjustments here. So um, 
and leave any questions down there. If anything radically changed, please come back to the video and check at 6.30 tonight. Um, if we do get us up at, for a podcast and there's um, a place to leave questions or comments there, same thing. We'll try to monitor that and get back to you. But the best way to get a hold of me, if you need to, is at MegRuler31 on Twitter. Um, I have... Just follow me. I'll follow you back. My DMs are open. Um, you know, if you have questions, just if you're a new listener or um, viewer here, can't approve full lineups. But if it's a one v one, or if you want to know, like, you know, different stacks or, or pitchers or things like that, or things change like during the course of a day, then it's perfectly fine. But if you want more information, the full package, then if you go to the details, you can sign up for FSI DFS. A very, very um, cheap pricing there. You can get into our Discord. Discord's free to get into, and there's a lot of different free rooms and stuff to do in there besides like the premium things. But in the premium MLV room, you'll get our full core. You know, we do cover tiers, showdowns, like all the different slates. You know, coaching help you out with your lineups, and you just help you succeed. So, appreciate everybody for watching here. Um, so please. Um, click the like button that helps us out so much um, share the video with your friends or if this podcast actually worked um, spread the word that we're on um, doing a podcast now so uh, if it didn't happen today it, it's coming in the future we're, we're trying really hard on that one and we're excited to be able to offer that and then um, you know subscribe to our channel so you know when the videos are coming out so good luck in your contest today and we will see you next time for um, tomorrow's Friday. Should have a pretty large slate and be excited to break that down too. So thanks again for watching. Have a good day.